From this day on, you will see the Greeks as never before. You will see Aristotle in a completely different light. You will read Aristophanes and laugh at the lewd jokes and see it as your duty to laugh at those jokes. As your duty to find it funny when Socrates is talking about how far a flea can jump. Have you ever asked yourself why? Why it is we look up to the ancient rhetoricians like Cicero, looming large, or Pericles, Pericles' speech, or the logographers Lysander and Isocrates, or Socrates himself, who could speak for hours on end. Why it is that the ancient Greeks, in the theatre of politics, or in the real theatre itself, in comedies, in plays, in tragedies, why we look up to this rhetorical talent, we see it in the dictators of the 20th century, Mussolini, Hitler, great rhetorician, some great speech makers that we know of that even appear on this channel, like uh, Khrushchev. Um, why it is we look up to the ancient Greek system of people making speech and being, being able to just speak on these subjects, long speeches for hours or for, for minutes on end. We barely see anyone or know anyone personally that could do it. Maybe we've heard of Melenchon, who's a French politician right now that could speak on end, you know, minutes and minutes of uh, talking at the parliament, you know, in France. Maybe it is because we have a sense in which this might be something useful or important, or we have a sense of the power that this brings, you know, or we have some idea that this controls people, it sucks them in, it, you know, it makes them malleable and pliable, and you can speak to a crowd and they will do your every bidding. Demagogues. Demagoguery. And what do you mean by demagoguery? By demagoguery, I mean demagoguery. I thought so. Well, I'm here to tell you this is partly correct, but partly misleading. Partly, it is not what we're trying to achieve. We're not trying to become the next Cicero. We're not trying to reproduce his thoughts, his thinking, his style of rhetoric or whatever. We're not trying to uh, teach rhetoric at universities the way it was taught to some degree in the ancient world and in the medieval world. This is democracy. This means taking a risk, and taking a grave risk at that, that people listen to your proposal in the assembly, in the law courts, in different areas of politics and education. Giving your opinion, it has consequences. Giving your opinion in a democracy it can have great risks, like Socrates, who died. But isn't it your duty as a citizen? Isn't it what you're supposed to be doing to influence politics? But I challenge you, today, do you want to make a YouTube channel? Do you want to develop your skills? Do you want to have other people from the audience look at your video and then feel how other people are judging you, even if they say nothing at all, even if you have no reply other than good video, even if you get negative and positive responses but that have nothing to do with your performance as such. To just feel that other people are watching you, to feel the shame, you know, to feel 
the insecurity of the mediocrity or the imperfection of your video, of your performance, of your ability and capacity to transform a discourse and to express. When everyone else judges those ideas, they judge you because they are your ideas. Do you feel no responsibility to improve yourself in this way? I want to make this video and tell you how I really feel. Tell you, the audience, that, that now has grown to over 100 subscribers and um, thousands of views on different videos. My most viewed video, which is the um, three-hour audiobook of my, uh, you know, The Secret Speech, where I did an audiobook of something that didn't yet exist on YouTube, and that's why it got so, much, so many views. Um, I wanted to share with you kind of the experience that I have when, you know, the experience going beyond just what it means to, to make YouTube videos, but also the reception of people like you, the reception of um, my family, my friends, and so on. And the attitude that people generally take on when you make an effort to improve yourself in some to in in some field, uh, in some field of knowledge, like you know, my videos have mainly been about uh, reading a book and then making a video about that particular book. I'm trying to challenge myself in this YouTube video because I'm talking about something I haven't ever really uttered and really developed in any great for great ex to any great extent, and that then I start to maybe stutter, maybe speak incomprehensibly or say things where I don't know yet what's going to come um, but I try to develop it in my mind and on this subject it's just I you know I've had scattered thoughts but it's not like reading a book it's not like reading this book for example and going through it or just even a chapter out of this book I think I've read just two chapters out of this book um, or not yeah uh, and going through it, and then thinking about something, and the next passage, you're rethinking about it, you're reformulating these ideas, you're um, building up a basis on which to express your opinion. You're, you're making, you're creating your opinion. Meinungsbildung. So what I want to talk about is the attitude which people have, uh, have had when I, um, by the time I'm making this video, I've made quite a few videos, um, but maybe only in the, in the later videos people have started to have this attitude. I'm going to come to what that attitude is exactly. And another example, when I was in the gymnasium, a uh, kind of high school, a prep school for university, I uh, got better and better over the four years I was there at giving presentations, oral presentations, in front of the class. In the first year, I was a mess. I couldn't really speak on the topic. Uh, convincingly. Well, I already had had a bit of experience of that in even, you know, secondary and primary school, and that has helped to get me to some sort of level, you know, the school system is not completely useless for that, and it has prepared me up to gymnasium to do something like that. However, and I want to emphasize that when I put in some hard work to get some results, like being able to talk like this in front of the camera by staring into the camera, you know, compare this to my first video where I, you know, look up, even my last, la latest video where I tend to kind of look in the air and I don't really try to, you know, have in mind there's someone behind the camera trying to uh, hear what I, I have to say and I have to really perform this in a convincing, but also in a, uh, in a not, in not, <sighs> in a way that doesn't mislead the person there. Um, keep in mind, I, I speak three languages on this YouTube channel. I don't have the exact same amount of practice in each of these languages, but I try really hard, and it, it's something that I have a kind of drive for. And it comes also from, from uh, childhood. It's not something that just comes out of nowhere. I see other people that don't have that drive, and that's what differentiates um, the effort I put in 
to the, the effort that they are willing to put in and then the results that I get. But there are other things in my life where I really have to commit to it, I have to reason through why this should be important to me and then it becomes important to me and that I'm willing to put in effort for it. But with languages, it's always something intuitive that I think, oh, I have to look up these words. Oh, I have to um, go through, you know, when I'm reading this book, I have to read this sentence again because I really want to memorize this sentence much. I, I read books differently from other people I've, I've noticed. I read books, what, what people call close reading. I really read slowly and try to really understand everything that the author is trying to say. And I come, come, I get away or come away from this book very differently than some of, some of you would come away from this book because you haven't actually uh, delved that deeply into the book. Uh, you know, there were many examples at school where I was too slow for, to catch up for, for the class, but I still knew more about the text, even if I had read less about the text than my classmates sitting next to me, trying to read in the amount of time that we were given to read this text, trying to select, you know, pass. But I could jump from passage to passage and just select exactly what was necessary and close read it and really analyze it deeply. And they just kind of fumbled through it and didn't, they didn't have to achieve a good result because it wasn't necessary. You didn't have to have a six, you know, uh, in Switzerland, the grades are from one to six, six is being the best grade. And they, they didn't have to, ha they had to have a four minimum. And some even didn't need a four because they had better grades in other, other uh, courses. And so I think a lot of them didn't actually learn to analyze the text the way that you need to learn it for university. Um, some did. Um, I did it in a different way, I think. I did, you know, I really don't like to have this, you know, a this very small amount of time to read the text because I really want to get a sense also of the author's, um, the author's perspective, like holistically. He, he tried to read, write this whole text, okay, I still have in mind, you know, the author is, is maybe not rationally selecting all these examples. He's, he might be, you know, it might be some, some irrelevant note that he just put into the text just because uh, of some thought he had, but n that doesn't really belong there in the, in the reasoning of the passage. And, and you can read that out of the text, but I try to get a holistic understanding of what, what the author's intentions are. At the end of the gymnasium, by the end of, of the year, when I, uh, you know, uh, starting YouTube, people write to me, people say to me, you're very talented, especially after in, in gymnasium. Oh, you're so talented. Even the, the teachers say, you're so talented for this. And I just tell them, well, I, I don't actually tell them. I, I could tell them that I have a stutter. I had difficulty finding my words. And just a year before, the teacher also noticed that, you know, the students also, oh, you have difficulty, f you have to improve on that. And I take, took that as a uh, positive, uh, as feedback to use and to improve myself. You know, I, I actually took that as feedback. Whereas some people, they just, oh, the teacher said this negative thing. And I just don't like this kind of teacher. And I, I didn't like the assignment either and so, and so on. And then they choose to ignore what else they know about my performance generally, or my performance years ago, they're missing a chance to think about, to think through what it would take for them, how they could become better, and they're missing that chance.